girls hockey. Tonight, a top 10 matchup between the Breck Mustangs, number two team in Class A, and the Maple Grove Crimson, ranked third in Class 3A. Hello and welcome to Maple Grove Community Center. John Jacobson along with Dan Ficken. And Dan, I'm guessing, without doubt, there's as much talent in this game as we're going to see all season in girls hockey in our area. Oh my gosh, well, first of all, they're rated. We're going to watch seven Division I committed players play tonight on both these teams. Both big powers. Going to be a tremendous hockey game tonight. Each team with a handful of losses. Maple Grove coming off a loss here on their home ice against Spring Lake Park, Coon Rapids, 1 0 on Saturday. A decent team, but probably a team you would have expected them to beat. I think they're going to come out fired up tonight against Breck. I'll be honest with you, they're probably going to be a little PO'd at that little thing going on Saturday night. Caught him completely by surprise, but it might be the best thing that happened to him. They got another challenge tonight. There ain't no let up, man. They got to play a very good hockey team and they got to show their stuff. I mean, you know, this is a team was a runner up in the state and maybe kind of got to them a little bit. We'll see what they respond with here at home now against these Breck Mustangs. Breck had a couple of wins over the weekend, including a win over Hale Murray, the number two team in double A last Friday. That's got to give them a lot of confidence. Pioneers, certainly a quality club, one that beat Maple Grove earlier. So uh, Breck is, is a, a solid team, and they're going to be fun to watch tonight, too. Well, they're coming in on a four-game winning streak now, and, of course, now they're closing out the season, getting ready for that section seating, which, of course, Blake's sitting there. But they still got this game. they got to play two games against St. Paul United, who is also a rated team in 1A. So nothing gets soft for these guys. They're playing very good competition. But the Mustangs, again, fast, loaded with talent, fairly young team, too. A lot of 10th and 9th graders on this team. And their sophomore goalie, who's done a very, very good job for them this year. Let's look at our key players. They'll be teammates next year at the University of Minnesota. Future Gophers, starting with Breck and Grace Zumwinkle, who's having a terrific season, averaging over two goals a game. Okay, big, fast, strong, hands like silk, and can hit the net like nobody's business. She's a premier hockey player. She's been identified ever since she was a ninth grader. She's been a leader on this Mustang team. And boy, I'll tell you what, she is just fun to watch. And everything goes through grace. And for Maple Grove, Taylor Wente, I mentioned their future Gopher teammates. They're also just teammates of, of the national team here recently. And I had a great experience with that. Taylor having a terrific season as well for the Crimson. I think we'll call her hands, because man, she's got hands like nobody else. We watched her in the section final last year take a number of opposing players right out of their socks. She's got great moves, she's very fast, but she's sneaky fast. You think you got her and all of a sudden she puts on a burst of speed and oh, see you later. She's a premier hockey player in this state and it's gonna be a treat to watch both these players tonight. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun one tonight here in Maple Grove. Breck Maple Grove High School Girls Hockey comes up live on CCX Sports after this timeout. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. Welcome to Maple Grove Community Center. Breck and Maple Grove girls hockey tonight live on CCX. 16, four and two Breck and 15 and four Maple Grove. John Jacobson, Dan Ficken, and Ben Gislason with you for tonight's telecast. And we are just underway. Breck in the Navy and gold. Maple Grove in their home white with the crimson and gold. Dan, this should be a terrific hockey game tonight. A lot of talent on hand here at the community center. Yeah, looking at both teams, I think they're pretty square even. I think one of the only advantages Maple Grove might have is this big ice. Uh, if we're playing on an Olympic sheet, Breck usually doesn't play on that size sheet, so we'll see if that affects the Mustangs play. 
Abigail Riskovich carried it deep for Breck, but lost it back behind the net. Turned over at the blue line. Mustangs intercept. Chasing after it, Sidney Hansen from Maple Grove. Can't get it out. Intercepted the blue line. Backhand shot goes just wide of Coco Francis and the Maple Grove net. Crimson now clear it out and down the ice. And they will wave off icing as coming back to play the puck. Catherine Solahub for Breck. On the boards, Julie Murphy had it, had it taken away from her as Maple Grove takes over in the corner. Katie Denneke battling in the corner along with Solo Hub. But gets pushed back around behind the Breck net to the left boards. Kept in there by Emma Larson, number seven for Maple Grove. Larson able to dump the pass off nicely for Taylor Wente. Passed out in front, intercepted there by Breck. And out come the Mustangs. On a rush comes Olivia Mobley. And lost it as she came across the line. Maple Grove back. Aaron Roll in, puts it in on net, and stopped there by Ali Francic. And we get our first stoppage of play. And you look at Francic, terrific numbers for her. She has played every minute. Goals against average, <laughs> 1.62. Save percentage, 0.934. And that's talking about a sophomore here who's played every game so far. She's stood up very well for the Mustangs. A little bit of a feeling out process so far and trying to get a handle on the puck. Nothing really smooth yet. Maple Grove's had a little more time in the zone, but no real hard shots on goal yet either. And they'll chase Peyton Olson out of the circle. Denneke in. Wins the faceoff for Maple Grove. Out to the blue line. Big shot by Hansen, saved by Francis. It deflects it up and over the glass out of play. Nice play there with a good faceoff win by the Crimson. Got it out to the point. Slivers out. And just a nice shot here coming in on net. A little bit of a tester because she had a bouncy bounce to it. But Francis is right there on top of it. Good position. Probably going to see some of these players get in front of each of these goalies. The Maple Grove might have the best goaltending tandem in the state of Minnesota. Maple Grove controls off the faceoff. Corbin to the corner, moves up the boards, drops it back to Hansen. He'll dump it back behind the Mustangs net. Puck pops out to the right boards. Crimson still with it, trying to keep it in. Pinched by the Mustangs out to the blue line and out of the zone. And then Backhanded back in by Ellie Corbin. After it for Breck, Nicole Oppenheimer, number 21, has it. Passing on her right. Hits the pass ahead, and up come the Mustang. Then losing at the blue line, Allie Qualley. Qualley battling after it again as it's dumped by Maple Grove back into the zone where Oppenheimer has it for Breck. Behind the net goes to Emily Zumwinkle. Along the near boards and played out across the blue line. And gathered in there by Sadie Lindsay of Breck. Lost it at the Maple Grove line. Crimson with it. They'll break out with a pass to center. Nice little move there by Manna McMahon, the Ooh. talented sophomore in their offside. Boy, she had an opportunity, perhaps, had Maya Martinez on her lap, but the play's offside. Look at Coco Francis getting the start tonight. She split time with Brianna Blessy this year. Francis 9 and 2 goals against average under 1. <laughs> and a save percentage of .947. Tremendous effort by her. She's been a great goaltender for the Crimson here over the past few years. She uh, plays lacrosse too, girls lacrosse, and didn't want to play goalie. And they finally put her back at goalie, John, and they started having a winning season. Tina Campo with the puck for Maple Grove, getting a pass under right, pass to him. Breakout pass intended for Wente, a little too far, chased down. By Ella Brophy. Centering attempt from back behind the net by uh, Martinez. Now it's Wente with it, trying to skate out from the boards. Had it knocked off her stick. Breck trying to clear it, and they do up, get it out of two center to Gabby Billing. Ties up with Martinez right at center ice. Now fired into the Maple Grove zone as Breck goes off for a line change. Flying into the corner and pinching it deep for Breck is Mobley. Julia Pius going after it, tough along with Mobley. 
Maple Grove trying to clear it up the wing. Can't get it out of that corner. And finally skated back behind the net. And turning is McMahon. She lost it. Turned over to Mobley. Mobley, nice little spin move in the corner. Comes toward the front of the net. That hit a stick. Goes back behind to the left corner. Mobley getting knocked off the play. Gets it back. Double teamed by a couple of Crimson players. And finally, Denneke flipping it up to center ice. Oppenheimer will pass it back. Uh, here comes a chance for Breck. Shot in. Francis makes the save. Kendall Williamson staying out, seeing the line change by Maple Grove, stayed out by the blue line and got a quick pass back and created a good offensive opportunity. Maple Grove skating up was Emily Herdeen. She lost it. Brought back in by Williamson. Drop oh. pass. Missed there. The fan on the shot. Jumped back into the zone by Solo Hub of Breck. And controlled by Maple Grove. Peyton Olson with it. Went down at center, puck carried on by Grace Ford and shot down in to the Mustang zone. Solo hub after it there for the Mustangs along with Olsen of Maple Grove. Up on the boards, Hanson with a shot, hit a skate. Breck breaks out. Opportunity for the Mustangs. Quale carries deep. It's ridden off the play and a nice defensive play by Callie Precker. Alverson for Breck. Excuse me, Dan. No problem, Quali. Interesting, a ninth grader. It's just so it's a good speed, good smart ice sense, too. Breaking straight up the ice, trying to split the D. Centering pass out in front. Buck loose, top of the right circle is shot. And it escaped and deflects to the boards. Back out, left point. The solo hub putting it to the side of the net. Crimson cleared up the boards and out of the zone. They'll actually ice it here. You will get a faceoff coming back in the Maple Grove zone. Really good offensive pressure by the Breck Mustangs as we look at Ron Englehart, formerly a player at Roseville in high school and a Golden Gopher. A tremendous hockey career. He's done a good job here with the Mustangs, keeping them where they need to be. You see a good, good set of shots selection with the people. Breck Mustang stacking up in front of that net, trying to get in front of Francis and Screener and get some deflections. That was a good setup. Gabby Billing back behind the net. Taken by Maple Grove. Emma Larson with it. Lays it up the wing. And backhanded to the blue line, but kept in. Pass to the circle, trying to get it to Zumwinkle. Maple Grove turns it back. Out comes McMahon. Right circle, shot away. Goes wide on the short side of the net. Goes to the far boards. McMahon getting the pass from Martinez has it moves out to the high slot turns trying to put it out in front comes back to her one more time shot on and the save made by Francic and Breck able to push it out towards center gets past some Winkle and all the way down into the crimson end where Hanson takes it for Maple Grove up ahead they missed on the pass and this will be icing on Maple Grove again crimson a little off. Here. Look, look at Amber Hagelin, second year head coach, also a former Gopher hockey player. Coached at Wyzetta as well. Got them to the state championship game last year, Dan. Lost in overtime. Nice way to break in the, as a first year coach. Done a tremendous job with the Crimson and got him over the hub. That was their first state tournament appearance, yeah. too. And they've had some really good teams through the years. Now a chance and a shot away. Francis got to make a good save on a hard shot from the left side by Denneke. Denneke with it again, trying to put it toward the net. Francis got a piece of that, goes to the left boards. Now the puck to the corner. Crimson trying to set up camp in the zone. Pass intended back to the corner, picked off by Breck. And the Mustangs get it out to center. Trying to get a rush going. Williamson with it. And now Williamson rather at the left point, but Breck just offside. Well, Kendall Williamson right there showed another part of her game. She. Uh... Well, take a look at this opportunity here by Maple Grove. Just a good hard shot on net and then an opportunity for a rebound. There's Kendall Williamson, number eight. Look at her back check and tie up the far winger there from Maple Grove coming in. Just a great job. That's an important part of being a hockey player. Not only the offensive, but play well defensively. She's going to Colgate. Now Breck back with it again. Dump it out to center ice. Gets past Peyton Olsen of Maple Grove. But the 
Campa controls for Maple Grove back at the blue line. Touched at center by Corbin. Along the blue line. Picked up there by Paige Casibo. Dumps it into the Maple Grove zone. Taken by Emily Zumwinkle back behind her net. And back to Zumwinkle again. Played now by Carly Beanick trying to clear the zone for Breck. Shot wide of the Mustangs net. And after it is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer comes to her blue line and up to center ice. Shoots it in. Deep into the Maple Grove zone. Skating after it is Larson for Maple Grove. Larson dumping it around to the left boards. And the Crimson with it. Pass comes ahead. Here comes McMahon for Maple Grove. McMahon slides oh, it across. Valente. Oh. Francis got a piece of it. Came back out in front again. And Martinez unable to get to it to put it away. Well, they had Frantic out of the net. An opportunity there for Maple Grove, but not able to catch in. Nice play by McMahon here as she spread it out. They got, they got the puck out across and into a good center pass. The man goes wide and she sees Wente right there and just, just fails to connect, really connect and bury it. But what a nice play here. Puck bounced on him a little bit. I think it's a little warm in here, John. That puck is bouncing a little bit, but nice play by the Crimson. Yeah, Wente just couldn't control the puck, otherwise she would have been able to bury that one. Yep. And put Maple Grove on the board. As it is, we are scoreless. We are under eight minutes to play here in the opening period. Maple Grove, number three ranked team in class 2A. And Breck number two in 1A. This team's lost to Edina. As a matter of fact, Maple Grove's lost to them twice. Breck's also lost twice to the number one team in 1A. Blake Bears. Icing here on uh, Breck. That that could be the boil on on Breck season too because they're in the same section as yeah. Blake and Blake is just a tremendous hockey team and I'll tell you what they're going to have to go through them in sections to get the state though. Billing and Wenty on the faceoff. Wenty playing the pass for McMahon and the takeaway for Breck. Out comes Grace Sumwinkle into the zone. Sumwinkle's got a big oh. shot. She scores. Well, she showed it. She did. <laughs> My goodness. We talked about that in the pregame. I tell you what, she's big, strong, fast, and she can shoot the puck. That's why she's uh, put the points up big time for the Breck Mustangs. 49 for 50 points. Now that is for 35 goals. This is her 36 right there. And, well, I don't even know if Francis saw that one, John. She steps across the line and just lets it go. Upper corner, dead on. Boy, what a pretty goal. Zumwinkle's 36th of the season. And this just her 18th game. One more time. Just ripped. I, okay. I still couldn't see it on that third replay. She just let it go and right into that upper right hand corner. Boy, she's going to be something for the Minnesota Gophers. We got a penalty here on Maple Grove, tripping penalty against Julia Pius, and Breck's going to go on the power play. You know, that's something scary. Neither team wants to be in the box. Right now, Breck's power play is running at, I'm sorry, 40%. Which is phenomenal. If you can get 25% an effective rate on a power play, that's good. I mean, they're just phenomenal there. We'll see what the Mustangs can do. Zumwinkle has it. Left board sends it back out to Billing. Billing with a shot. Deflex. Goes to the corner. Still controlled by the Mustangs. Zumwinkle unassisted at 945. Now Maple Grove's Hansen gets it back for the Crimson. Hansen will fire it down the length of the ice. Nice burst of speed by Hansen. I tell you what, she said it's going out of the zone and she grabbed it and ran with it. Now Breck will set up again. Great Sumwinkle into the zone. All the way down back behind the net. Makes a little hit there. Gets it back off to Billing though at the point. Does Sumwinkle, or excuse me, off on the pass. Now it comes to Sumwinkle. 
Ooh. And the pass outside the zone. From Oppenheimer to Zumwinkle. They got a reset. Zumwinkle will bring it in. It's brought down nicely. Good defensive play by McMahon. And the Crimson able to clear the puck down the length of the ice. Down to 30 seconds left in the Breck power play. The Crimson getting physical with Miss Zumwinkle. And I can see that. That's probably the only way to really slow her down. And did a nice job of rubbing her off in the last two rushes. Beanick tried to put it out front for Williamson of Breck. Comes back out to Williamson. Sideboards billing with it, getting tied up by a couple of Crimson players. Puck comes loose. Hanson after it for Maple Grove. Gets it across for Campa. Maple Grove is back at full strength. Puck comes up to center ice. Wente put the pass on, and Breck intercepts and sends it out of the zone. This will be icing on Breck. Come back down to the Mustang zone. We're just under five minutes to play here in the first period. Well, I'm not sure this is what Coach Aglin was looking for. I think she was kind of looking for a response after that loss to Spring Lake Park tonight. And uh, they're just not quite clicking here right now. They've set up a couple good plays, but their caught pass or a made pass uh, away from, from getting on the board here. Crimson trying to get a shot away, but can't. Maple Grove playing it out to center. Campa got a stick on it, got it over across to Precker. Backhanded, intercepted just inside the blue line. Wally kept it in for Breck. Now back behind the net. Lost by the Mustangs. And out comes Maple Grove. Denicky came in on the right side, went down. Puck goes to the corner, and after it there, Emily Zumwinkle plays it around the boards on the far side. Tie up in the corner. Puck comes free. Push back out to the blue line. Hansen oh. trying to get it across. A little too far ahead on the pass to Hansen, who puts it toward the net. Back behind the goal. Denicky going after it, trying to center it out in front. It's at the side of the Mustangs net and controlled by Breck. Emily Zumwinkle with it there. He's just an eighth grader. Got it outside the zone and then brought back in. And offside is Maple Grove. Emily Zumwinkle, the third of the three <laughs> Zumwinkle girls. The older sister Anna is out playing on the East Coast. We mentioned Grace going next year to, to Minnesota. Along with Taylor Wente of Maple Grove. A lot of talent in that family, and just Emily being an eighth grader and playing a regular varsity shift at defense, that's that's a pretty good player. Pass comes ahead. Here's Grace Zumwinkle. Trying to center it out in front. Nobody was able to get a stick on it there. And Maple Grove comes right back with McMahon flying down the right side. McMahon will carry it. He puts it on net. Save made. Shot from out high. Oh. And another save made. A couple of big stops by Francic. First one on McMahon. And the second one on the shot from Precker. Francic's positioning is just so good. She was out on top of the crease on both those shots to be able to cut down the angle, get a handle on it. And the rebound control is really good. Pius with a low shot. And Man. the glove save by Francic. These have not have been easy saves. No. No. I mean, Maple Grove set up really good here. You can see the first one coming down here. McMahon getting one slipping across. And then this shot, point blank. But look at look at her position. She's up above that crease line, cutting down the angle. Same thing here. She's up above that crease line. And it's really hard to get one higher. She's covering up most of the net based on that angle. Denicky, backhand shot. Francic the save. Steers that to the corner. Crimson putting some pressure on here. In the last... Two shifts, 240 to play in the period. Shot from out high. There the save is. made the puck loose and knocked wide. Roll was after it. She was being defended pretty well and couldn't put it away. Comes back to the Maple Grove zone. Larson with it. Up to center ice to roll, trying to catch Breck in a line change. Shot in deep by Pius all the way around the Mustangs net it goes. And taken by Mobley there of. Breck, Mobley Ooh. comes up the left side. Nice poke check away from her there. Her Dean whacked at it for Maple Grove. At center, her Dean will bring it in left side, push it deep. 
Where Oppenheimer takes it for Brack. Oppenheimer turning. Now the Mustangs coming. They got a two on two. Zumwinkel with it down the left side. Zumwinkel centering pass. A little bit behind her teammate Williamson there. Carry deep shot in. And Francis got to come up big on Mobley. Now back comes Maple Grove. Hansen with it. Down the right side. Loses the puck as she ran into Oppenheimer of Breck. They go to the corner. Comes back out to Hansen. Shot away to flex wide. Goes to the boards. McMahon has it there for Maple Grove. Comes out in front. Olsen with a shot. And the save made by Francis again. Grace Sumwinkle again. Uh, excuse me, this is Williamson on the rush, or Beanick on the rush. For Brett, carried all the way deep before Hansen took her out of the play. McMahon has it back. McMahon, nice little move to sidestep a defender. Comes through center ice. In on the zone, and the shot. And Francis makes the save. A good rush with the puck by the sophomore McMahon, and the save made. Good rush down on the ice by McMahon here. She gets an opening and just rips a shot. Puts it in a spot that Francis did a nice job covering up the rebound, but the last time it came up that high, she dropped it in front. And Maple Grove now has got somebody crashing in that at all times, so someone's going to be there to smack the rebound in. Oh, clean face-off win. Wenty trying to put it in front. And Martinez was going down. Brophy was on top of her. Back to Maple Grove zone, trying to gather themselves up for one more rush. 45 seconds to go in the period. Buck goes deep back behind the Breck net. Martinez has it for Maple Grove. To an empty corner. Skating after it there is Wenty. Tie up by a couple of Breck players. And finally moving in Oppenheimer to take it for Breck. Under 30 seconds to go. Now Oppenheimer looking up ice. Pushes it out to center. Played back by Maple Grove. McMahon's got Wenty on her right. McMahon a shot away. Francis just got a piece of it. After it goes Wenty. Gets taken out. Puck moves. They jab at it at the side of the net. Francis got it covered up. And then we get a face off with seven seconds remaining in the first period. So, so far the Mustangs I'll tell you what. Francis has been their star. Back across the body here, Francis going to her to her left, and that puck came back to her right, and she got that blocker out and stick, and uh, kept it from going to the net. Boy, she, she's made about four or five saves here, John, in the last seven minutes that have been big. It's the icing on Brack, and they'll come back with two seconds left in the period. So this up to be a pretty much a shot off the faceoff or a quick faceoff win and a shot to be able to get it in in two seconds. I think he called it there, John, the way they're setting it yeah, up. Yep. They're going for the shot. Stacked up right in front. Mustangs hoping just to get a tie up on the puck, and they do. And that will be the end of the first period. Good, entertaining first period of hockey between our two outstanding teams. And then Breck leading it one to nothing. Ben Gisselson is ringside. He's going to be talking with coaches between periods. We'll take a break. We'll come back. With that and more, you're watching High School Girls Hockey, Breck Maple Grove, live on CCX Sports. And we're back to Maple Grove after this. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. Brick leads Maple Grove one to nothing after one period. Let's go ringside. Ben Gisselson standing by with Amber Hagland. Thank you, John. Uh, a strong first period here by Breck. A strong first period by Maple Grove. It's a two A or two single A, a number two single A team versus the number three double A team. It was a game that everybody had circled on their calendars. Coach Hegland, what was your expectations coming into the period, and how did you you think your team lived up to those expectations? You know, I 
we've been telling the girls the entire uh, time preparing for them that it was going to go both ways and both teams were going to create opportunities and I like where we're at. Uh, we're down by one. They, they had one great opportunity and they capitalized and we had three great opportunities and we haven't put the puck in the net but I, it's going to come. In a game where you're playing against a goaltender who's seen the puck go right now, Francis is a strong goalie. She's played every minute for this Breck team. But you had some chances that went by the wayside again, missing the net. How do you tell, what are you telling your team coming into a second period where they've had some great opportunities like you mentioned, but they just haven't gone home? What's the mantra to your shooters? We're just going to continue to tell the kids to go hard to the net and, and fight for those rebounds, and it's going to be a battle in front of the net, and, and we need to win some of those. So many teams that have won state championships before talk about how just getting there either a year before or two years before makes such a big difference in finally getting over the hurdle and winning a state title. Maple Grove, your program, gets there for the first time last year. How has that experience built into this season and how is it going to continue to be a factor as section times approach? Right. I think it's both good and bad. Um, we, the girls understand that they want to get back there, but they also know that it's a special thing and that we've got a whole bunch of great teams in our section that are going to um, contend and, and can win on any given night. So we're trying to prepare as much as possible with our schedule and the opponents that we're facing as well as every day of practice. Amber, thank you so much for your time and best of luck in the second and third period. Thank you. Amber Haglin, head coach of the Maple Grove Crimson, looking for a strong second period out of her players coming right up. John, back up to you. All right, thanks very much, Ben, and thanks to Coach Haglin. We'll hear from Coach Engelhart after the second period of play here on CCX. Well, we called the name of Tina Campa tonight, the senior defenseman who's been a big part of this Maple Grove program the last several years. Jason Malillo featured her on this week's Sports Jam show on CCX. And here's a look at Tina Campa. The most passionate people you'll ever meet, especially about the game of hockey. The diminutive defenseman is enjoying her senior season with the Crimson. Most of us have started when we were probably first or second grade all the way up until now. And, you know, some of the teammates that are actually going on to play college hockey, I played with for countless summers and all that. And so all year round. And uh, I just really enjoy, you know, being able to be around them. And it's, you know, like I said, like there are a lot of them are my best friends. And I definitely just enjoy the time that we have together. And I just I can't wait to finish it off this year. Maple Grove is ranked second in the state, following up on a 2016 playoff run that brought the Crimson all the way to the state championship game. We did lose in the championship game, but we took great strides within our um, just program in general. And, you know, I've never been happier with where we are now. And I can't wait to, you know, use that experience and that success and feel us for, for this year. Campa is a smart hockey player and over the years has tailored and refined her game. Obviously I'm small and so most people don't assume that I play defense um, but I think I you know I have to use that to my advantage so I can move pretty well agility wise and you know I may not have the long reach or the you know just the big slapper all the time but I do what I can so I just I try to my skating is what I focus on a lot because if I'm not so big, I can't just poke check everybody. Um, and I just, I use my quickness and my agility to the best that I can. I think I see the ice very well. She is so precise on uh, playing one-on-ones and two-on-ones and positioning in the defensive zone that she doesn't need to have a long reach and she doesn't need to um, have room for error um, because she's a near perfect defenseman. Camp also plays lacrosse at Maple Grove, a sport she didn't pick up until seventh grade. On the Crimson Varsity since her freshman year, Campa is a forward in lacrosse, something she says has benefited her on the ice. I think that you get a different perspective, um, obviously, because you know I'm more focused on scoring goals than I am, you know, stopping them. And I think that whether or not I realize it, I think I've learned a lot about just my game in both sports, you know, like when I'm on the defense, you know, it's not just about defense, you know, I can be offensive too and I can do different things and I think I understood my skills and kind of where I can benefit the team most for both sides. Camp will head north after high school and play hockey at Bemidji State, possibly majoring in psychology or exercise science, two fields of study that could be beneficial in the future. I ultimately want to be a Division One hockey coach and I think both of those could kind of benefit me in different ways for that. She has a tremendous hockey IQ and, and thinks the game at a very high level. She, I have
have no doubt is going to be successful as a coach. Um, that, as well as her uh, personality and her approach to people and just being outgoing and, and wanting to see the best in people are going to lead her to a, a great career. Thanks, Jason. Very nice piece on Maple Grove's Tina Campa. We are going to take a look after the second intermission, a feature we did earlier this season on Grace Zumwinkle. We're back with our first period highlights and more girls hockey from the Maple Grove Community Center after this timeout. Our score after one, Breck one, Maple Grove nothing. More live girls hockey on CCX after this. The color in my garden keeps the pink of my cheeks. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have meals on wheels. They're my savior. My name is Lola Silvestri. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. John Jacobson with Dan Ficken and Ben Gislason. It's one nothing Breck. Through one period of play tonight. Highlights from the opening 17 minutes of play tonight. At Maple Grove Community Center. Maple Grove certainly put a lot of shots toward the net. Of, put a lot of rubber on Ali Francic. Breck has had a few scoring opportunities. Although it's definitely been Maple Grove with the better, more quality shots on net. But the young sophomore has come up big between the pipes, Dan, for Breck. She's showing her stuff. I'll tell you what, the reason Breck's where they're at. I mean, this is really a young hockey team, and to have a sophomore goaltender stand up gives you a lot of confidence, and uh, she's been the star so far in the game for the Mustangs, no question about it. Here's the only goal of the Ooh. game, 9.45, unassisted by Grace Zumwinkel for her 36th goal of the season. And that's put the Mustangs on top. Come in with a winning streak, trying to extend it tonight. Maple Grove coming off a loss to Spring Lake Park Coon Rapids on Saturday here on their home ice. Shots on goal favoring Maple Grove as the scoring chances do as well. Just one penalty in the period. Breck unable to cash in on the power play. But it's certainly not a, a spot Maple Grove wants to be in a lot tonight. Nope. Shorthanded against, against Breck. They're absolutely not. I mean, whatever team has the most penalties, they'll be at the disadvantage right now because both have driven special teams. We'll take another timeout. We'll come back, drop the puck with period number two. Breck Maple Grove girls hockey continues on CCX in a moment. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast does whatever she wants, obviously. She's sleeping right now. She's an epic snuggler. She's so comforting. She's so loving. Toast makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew right then that she was special. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood? or when people know your name. 
Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. We are back at Maple Grove Community Center, ready for the start of the second period. Brace Sumwinkle's goal, giving Breck the only goal of the game, a one to nothing edge. Maple Grove and uh, coaches Gray and Hagelin, I think overall pretty good effort. I mean, they got some scoring yes. chances, but Allie Francis just playing really well between the pipes for Breck. Yeah, they're really going to have to go out right now. It's mostly lightning quick shots. They're probably going to have to get a couple people in front of her to screen her. We can get some shots from the point, uh, get them to go through and uh, distract her because she's seeing everything they're throwing at him right now. What a quick face-off win for yeah. Manic Big Man who carried it deep into the Maple Grove zone, into the Breck zone rather, before losing it. Wente had it picked off. On a good play by Oppenheimer. Oh. Able to get it out. Here's some Wickel coming down the left side. Drops a pass off for Billing. Backhand shot. Francis makes the save. Comes back to Oppenheimer just inside the blue line. Drops it off on the boards. Good fight for the puck. Backhand shot. And Francis has got to come up huge on the save on Riskovich. Back out. Blue line shot away. And that's fired high and over the Maple Grove net. Back to the corner and along the boards. Taken by Breck again one more time. Zumwinkle shot Billing with a tip. And Francis comes up huge. The Coco Francis tested more in that shift than she was most of that first period. Back comes Maple Grove. McMahon with a shot. And the save made by Francis. McMahon gets the puck again on the right boards. Lost it. Pushed out of the zone by the Mustangs. And it'll be skated down by Campa. And they'll go. Oh, almost into the net. They... Oh. Francis was waiting to see if it would go wide because they were signaling it would be icing and it hit the oh, outside of the pipe and nearly went in off her skate. Oh my Yikes. gosh. She gets tested and, and stands up beautifully and just a few minutes before and all of a sudden, ooh, major guffaw oh. here. Ooh, that was close. I go off her stick or off the, off the pipe. Maybe she played it. Regardless, it stayed out. Yep. Campa with it now. Able to play it up the wing to Aaron Roll. Mustangs, though, intercept. Get the puck back in the circle. It's loose. Carried back in. Well, I tell you, John, the Mustangs got themselves a little jump right now. They came out of that locker room ready to play some hockey. Yep. They're flying. Williamson trying to get the pass off. That's broken up and skated out by Maple Grove by Roll. The end of the zone. Deep turns away from pressure. Back out to the blue line, but missed. On the pass, and it's all the way down to the Crimson Zone. Precker playing it nicely there for Camp ahead, trying to catch the uh, Mustangs in a line change. Denicky then gets tied up, well defended by Ashley Halverson, and that allows Breck to come back the other way. Out comes Emily Zumwinkle into the Maple Grove Zone, back behind the Crimson net. Puck played around. Oppenheimer will get to it first for Breck. She'll dump it back behind the Crimson net. Goes to the far corner. Back out to the blue line. Emily Zumwinkel with it there. Backhanding it down the boards. Halverson lost it in the corner. Trying to gain it back in the circle. 
But it's Maple Grove with it, and they'll shoot it down the ice. This will be icing on the Crimson. Entertaining first three minutes of play to the second period, Dan. Oh, my gosh. Maple Grove here is developing a set of tired legs here. But good opportunity. They spread it out wide and got in tight and almost got an opportunity. But here we go. One of the sophomores, again, Halverson, making a tremendous play for the Mustangs. And, I, John, I'm surprised at the amount of sophomores, eighth graders, and ninth graders that are playing well here. Right now I've counted seven of them that are making key plays for the Mustangs. Puck touched into the zone by Casibo of Maple Grove. Muscled back behind the net by Emily Zumwinkle. Tie up of the sticks up high down in the corner. Maple Grove trying to come out with it. Back behind the net. Casibo with it. Turning at the end and lost it. And it's knocked out by Lucy McGlynn. And Hansen has it back for Maple Grove in her own zone. Pass ahead, and Oppenheimer got a stick on it to break that rush up. Hansen will try to start Maple Grove back up. Ran into oh, a direct oh, player, oh, Halverson. Oh. Has a chase for the puck. Zumwinkle with it with a shot. Francis the save. Maple Grove back into end action off McMahon's stick. Chased down by Brophy of Breck. Brophy number 15 for the Mustangs. Nice play to wait for the defender to go by. Now goes back behind her net. Plays it around the boards, trying to get it to Emily Zumwinkle. High up, Maple Grove looking for the takeaway in the corner. Comes up the wing and out of the zone where Grace Zumwinkle handles it. That's Billing coming down the middle. Zumwinkle carries deep, puts it out in front. Nobody there. And an A.B. sweater to put a stick on and it's iced by the Crimson. Oh, boy. You know, I'm getting a kick out of watching this too, Jen. We, you know, we think of Breck, and we think of Maple Grove, offensive powers. The, the way that they're playing defense, Breck, look at that. They're just like, okay, give up my body, whatever. And then they come right back, Grace Lumingle with a puck, and then gets an opportunity, you know, lightning quick attack. But Breck right now is really showing me something on how to play defense and keeping everything to the outside, not allowing the Crimson to have anything in the middle. And it's, it's, it's working, in fact. Their goalie hasn't had to work that hard so far. Maple Grove back the other way. Shot away by Martinez. That's off Oppenheimer's skate and comes right to Grace Zumwinkle. She'll carry it into the Crimson Zone. Zumwinkle in the slot. Shot away. Francis steers it away. Martinez clearing it for Maple Grove. Oppenheimer keeps it in. The shot was going wide, but Francis gloves it and drops the puck, but long enough held for a faceoff. You know, I'll tell you what, even that little guffaw that Francis had, I'm, probably a good thing that she got three or four shots right off the bat in the first minute. Now she's awake, so and we know how she can play. I mean, less than one goal per game. So she's going to have to stand up to it now. Phoenix trying to control the puck for Breck off the faceoff win. Puck out yeah, dangerously in front of that Crimson net, but then the Crimson able to clear a two center. Taken back. Brought back in deep. Tie up back behind the net. A good work on the play by Crimson. Tying up the forward for Breck. Williamson and Beenick both after it for Breck, but it's Maple Grove intercepting, clearing it out to center. Shot back to center ice. Brought back in. Shot away, and Francis able to make the stop. Denicky with the shot. Denicky gets it again for Maple Grove, putting it out in front. Here we go. Francica save. Still a shot away from the circle. Another stop. Cleared away to the corner by the Mustangs. Denicky can't get to it. Cleared to the blue line, but Campa keeps it in. Shot didn't get all the way through. Goes to the far corner. Cleared by Breck to the blue line. Hansen keeps it in. Denicky will skate after it. Getting there first, though. Williamson for Breck. Moving in, Denicky back behind the net, trying to backhand it. Now it's Olsen with it. Olsen stops, centering it out in front. But take it away there by Breck. And skating it out of the zone, and center ice comes Mobley in. Shot away, save made by Francis. And Mobley almost took it away, but not quite for Martinez. She's headed in our Campa, rather, bringing it up ice. Campa carries it deep, centers it out in front. 
Rancic might have got a stick on it. Clear to the blue line. Maple Grove able to keep it in. Puck around left side. Clear to the blue line. Out it comes to center. Larson will shoot it in for Maple Grove. Okay, now, John, Crimson got to stop trying to slam it into the slot. If they get it down low, they get it up top to the point. They got bodies in front of Francic now. Good opportunity to get a screenshot, but they need to get it out top and spread out Breck. They're piled in front of their net, and they're not letting them get anything in the guts. Mustangs couldn't connect on a pass. It's icing on Breck. And we'll come back down to the Mustang zone. Just inside of 10 minutes to play here in the second period. 1-0 Breck. I would say that the, the pace partner in this period is a little bit higher than it was in the first period. Man, these both teams are coming out now skating. The Jets have arrived. Tie up, but now Breck takes the puck away. Here's Grace Zumwinkle with it. Zumwinkle has Riskovich coming down the slot. Zumwinkle tied up nicely. Good defensive play yes. by Precker of Maple Grove. And the Crimson have it. Martinez plays it up through center. Wenty had it caught up in her skates. Oppenheimer takes it away for Breck. Oppenheimer skates to the Crimson line. Passes it across. Billing at the right boards. Hansen defensively takes it away from her. Now tie up. Billing and Hansen are a and Williamson back behind the net. Take away by Sydney Hansen. Oh, Maple Grove. Out she comes to center. She'll slide it into the Breck zone. Brophy couldn't get to it before Wenty did for Maple Grove. Wenty dumping it to the corner. Good tie up there with Williamson along with Denneke, or with uh, Roll, rather. Play to the far left corner. Solo hub. Gets the tie up for Breck, number 23. Puck freed up. And the Mustangs will play it up the wing. Out comes Mobley down the left wing. Poke check away by Denneke and a good defensive play. To the blue line, kept in the zone. Backhand shot deflected, knocked out of the side of the goal by Mobley. Freed up by Emma Larson of Maple Grove. Mobley back behind the net. Lost it as she gets tied up with Wente. Intercepted. Taken by Williamson, trying to put it out front for Maple for Breck. Now taken behind the goal. Beenick playing it out. Shot oh. Oppenheimer. The say uh, the shot on Francis, who makes another stop. That was a tough save. That was a screenshot that came in between the defenseman's legs. He went going down for the block. Denneke oh. with a shot, the tip shot, and it's just popped over the net by Wenty. Got it over the goalie Francic, but also over the net. Maple Grove trying to set up again here. Seven and a half go. minutes to go. Campa with the pass. Dumps it to the corner. Missed on hitting the, her teammate roll. It's around the far boards. Kept in by the Crimson. Peyton Olson skating after it for Maple Grove. And now Breck has it again. McGlynn getting it up to center ice and chopped into the zone by Ashley Halverson. McGlenn kept it in around the left boards, back behind the net. Olsen up on the right, centers it out, and cleared into the zone by Solo Hub of Breck. Corbin for Maple Grove behind her net. Behind Sydney Hansen. Casibo. We get it for Hansen. It's right back behind the Maple Grove net. Billing takes it for the Mustangs. Billing taking the return pass from Solo Hub moves in. Shot away. I don't know if Francis ever saw it. Hit some traffic there in front. Goes to the corner. We're going to have a penalty coming up here on Maple Grove. Billing backhanding it toward the net. And as it's touched by Precker, we'll get our second penalty of the game and the second power play for Breck. Well, Hansen making a play here and getting caught. And it was close to the boards, and it was from behind. I think they're going to call it a check. Nope, boarding. Yeah, and that was the problem right there. Got the feet cut up and put it right into the boards. And they're going to call that. But, you know, a lot of this physical play, they've been letting them play. And uh, it's really been fun to watch. Both teams playing, I mean, getting gritty 
you know, these are two fast skating, powerful, move the puck type teams. And the center they're watching them play this kind of grinded, you know, physical hockey uh, has been fantastic. But right now the Crimson got a real challenge here. This Breck power play is very good. Hanson goes for roughing at 10.36 of the second. Shot away. Francis had a clean look on that. Oppenheimer shot. While we have a moment, happy birthday, Coco Francis, today, Dan. It is her birthday today, by gosh. I think she wants to celebrate it by not letting any more goals in the net for the Breck Mustangs. Oppenheimer moving in from the point. Puck comes to the side of the net, out in front. Cleared away, but Breck still controlling. Oppenheimer again moving in from that right point. Mobley trying to put it, get a shot on net. Yeah. Goes over Francis in the net. Great Sumwinkle at the far boards. Dumped back behind the net. It comes to McMahon of Maple Grove, but Breck still controls. Great Sumwinkle with it. In deep, right out in front. Mobley and Francis has got to come up huge and does. Makes a big save. Now, Maple Grove coming back shorthanded. Possible two on one. Carrying deep goes McMahon with it. And taken out of the play, back behind the goal. Breck played that pretty well defensively. On the shorthanded rush, back comes Mobley for Breck. Into the zone, lost the puck. Precker's right on her. Brecker getting a stick on it. Taken by Williamson, gets it to Zumwinkle. Zumwinkle dumping it off for Billing. Billing shot, deflected, comes to Precker of Maple Grove. Billing after it, gets it back for Zumwinkle. Great Sumway go unleashes that big shot again. And Francis this time gets the glove out there and makes the save. Well, I tell you, if you're the Crimson, you do not want to see that wind up by Great Sumwinkle. Watch this. Just rips it this time low. But Coco Francis saw it all the way. And she's good enough for the uh, Union College commit to make the save. Does a great job there. 20 seconds left in the power play now for Breck as it's cleared down the length of the ice. Oppenheimer will skate it up here. Grace Sumwinkle, one more rush here for the Mustangs with the man advantage. Come to deep, kick a dangerous care of Maple Grove back at full strength. Puck kept in the zone by Solo Hub. She gets knocked down. And taken by Campo, dumped to the head to center ice, too far out in front of Denicky. At the Breck blue line, a battle for control of the puck. Phoenix had it briefly, but it's Denicky of Maple Grove with it. Shot away, save made by Francis. She's made all of them tonight for Breck. Under four minutes to play on this quick moving hockey game here in the second period. It, 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 Franz, I guess, is looking so comfortable in that, John. She, I mean, you hardly even notice she makes the save. It's kind of like she's brushing Mosquito off. Oh, my gosh. Buck lost deep briefly by Campa, but unable to take advantage was Riskovich, and back comes Maple Grove. Here we go. Here comes a shot and a goal. Guess who? Tied up by Maya, Maya Martinez. Maya Martinez, and it's a 1-1 game. Just a beautiful set of passing plays. They've been so close. Finally got Maya Martinez in on Forensic all by herself. And it, that's let's let your goalie hang out to dry there. Just a beautiful set of play by the Crimson. Speed, motion, puck movement. You got it, and when she got in there, she made this thing. There's a great pass right there. Got her past the D, and just rips it up into the upper corner. Pass Francis. Go ahead. Rares a move right there. Just a beautiful play. And just roofs it to get this game tied. And after that first period, boy, they needed one of those. I'll tell you, they tie this game up. And a good job killing off that, that penalty, John. I mean, Francis did a good job holding them off. But, boy, I'll tell you, they needed that. Maya Martinez, her 10th goal of the season. She's third on the team in scoring behind Wente and McMahon. And it ties up. At one at the 13-34 mark of the second period. Larson and Roll get the assist on the Martinez goal. 
Boy, Hanson with a dangerous play across the point there. She didn't look. She thought a partner was open, and there was a Breck player right in between. Buck just outside the Breck blue line. Uh -oh. Here's Zumwinkle coming in on the shot. Francis the save. Sydney Hanson just got back into the play late. Now it comes to Martinez. Up ahead through center ice. Down in on the left side. Deep comes Winty. Nice oh. pass off. And McMahon oh. buries it. Maple Grove goes in front. Oh, I knew this hockey game was going to be fun to watch. Boy, just another pretty play from Wente to McMahon. And just all of a sudden, the Crimson are up by a goal. Watch this play right here. Look at that. Just a touch pass. And then McMahon didn't waste any time. Buried it upper corner. Francis again, kind of like, what? Oh, my gosh. He's right there with the puck. Just feathers that pass in beautifully. And then just slips it into the net. Wow. Nice play. McMahon, her 17th goal of the season. Wente and Martinez will get the assist and the goal at 14.30. Two goals, 56 seconds apart for Maple Grove. And now the Crimson in front, two to one, with under two and a half minutes to go and looking for more. Comes to Larson, dropping it down to the corner. On the boards, Breck clearing it out to center ice. Mustangs come ahead, Beanick. Carried it across the line, kept in, and cleared out by Maple Grove. Here's Dedeke for Maple Grove. Dedeke pulls it into the circle, and their shot going just wide of oh, Francic and the Breck net. But just watching the quality of the skills of all these players, John, the way they're moving with the puck, the way they handle the puck, I mean, you can see why they're both rated in the top 10 in each of their particular divisions if you want to call it but I I think Breck might be rated if they were in 2A also. Yeah. Backhand shot Francis the same decides to cover up and we get a whistle of just over a minute to play 119 to be exact here in the second period so Maple Grove trailing the whole way until these last few minutes of the second period which Ingo Hart doesn't necessarily like what she's seen defensively the last few minutes of play. <laughs> and they were playing so well here in this period. We were complimenting them that they were. They were covering bodies. They were leaving nothing in the middle. And all of a sudden the middle opened up with a couple plays there. Their defense got caught. Buck comes out to center ice. Intercepted though. Taken by Wente. Pulls the puck back. Trying to get the shot away. And then a nice poke check away. to get it away from Wente. Good play by Billy. Came back to the Breck blue line where Brophy plays it ahead into the Crimson zone. Maple Grove has it there. Hansen with it. Ahead to Martinez. Martinez got two points here in this second period. Dumping it into the Breck zone with under a minute to go here in the second period of play. McMahon after it, number 10 for Maple Grove. Off. Around the boards, near side. Maple Grove keeping it in. Nice play by Wente. Carries deep. Being tied up by Billing. Francis trying to get Ooh. to the loose puck. Couldn't. McMahon has it in the corner. Looking to get it off and does to Wente. Wente, a few seconds left here in the period. Sends it out. Right point. Shot away from there. And that's deflected just wide. Ten seconds to play in the period. Back behind the net. One more chance perhaps. Wente putting it out front and then cleared by Zumwinkle down the length of the ice as the second period comes to an end. Wow, that was Woo. a lot of hockey in that second <laughs> period. Not just the two goals, but it was end to end, Dan. Oh, pretty yeah. much the entire 17 minutes. Yeah, as we said, we got a little fire wagon hockey going here up and down. They both found their legs. I think Breck got it started early and, must, and Crimson suddenly realized they better get on their skates and start skating or they're going to get run right off their rink and uh, they picked up the pace. It was a fun, fun period to watch. We'll take time out. We'll come back with more hockey action from the Maple Grove Community Center. The Crimson lead the Mustangs 2-1 through 2. We have more on CCX after this timeout. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? 
My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Maple Grove 2, Breck 1 through two periods of play. Let's go back ringside. Ben Gislason standing by with Rhonda Engelhart. Thank you, John. I'm here with head coach Rhonda Engelhart of the Breck Mustangs. And Rhonda, it's been a really back and forth game. It's been a fun game to be a part of when you're not associated with either team. When you are, it can be a bit wearing at times that it can really make you a little bit stressed. But nonetheless, a fun hockey game. But the opening to that period was a completely different story than what we saw at the end of the first period where Maple Grove controlled. You came out and dominated the first part of that period. A good stretch through the second period, then things changed at the drop of the hat at the end of the second frame. Maple Grove gets two quick goals. What do you think was the change first off to give Breck a good second period to the end there, and then what changed to give the Crimson the edge towards the end of the second period? Yeah, we started off well. We were getting the puck to the net, getting those shots on net, and then we just had a couple of uh, miss missteps defensively, and if you give Maple Grove any room, they're gonna capitalize, and that's what we kind of did. We gave them too, many, too much time to do what they can do. Grace Zumwinkle has a goal in this game. Her skill is always on display. It's easy for anybody watching a game to notice she can really take over at any moment. What did you notice coaching her? What does she do away from the game, away from the rink that we don't get to see that makes her such a prolific scorer? Well, she's definitely a kid that's not, uh, I don't think anybody works harder than she does. She puts hours and hours in and always wants to get better. Um, she's kind of never satisfied. So no matter what her game is, she's always asking for how she can improve and that's why she's as good as she is. Finish this sentence for me. Maple Grove loses this game to the Breck Mustangs if? <laughs> if we make smart decisions defensively and get the puck to the net. Fantastic, Coach. Thank you so much for your time, and best of luck in the third. Thank you. Head coach Rhonda Engelhart of the Breck Mustangs. One to, or two to one game, Maple Grove with the lead, but it's been a fun one so far. Can't wait for the third. Back up to you guys. No doubt. Thanks very much, Ben. Thanks to both coaches for taking a few moments to spend time with us after the period. Well, we heard Coach Engelhart talk about uh, Grace Zumwinkle back in December. Had a chance to meet the Breck senior and profiled her on our Sports Jam show on CCX. And now is a look at Breck senior forward Grace Zumwinkle. Grace Zumwinkle finished in the top 10 at the state class 2A golf tournament last spring. This fall, she played in the state tennis doubles final for a second straight year, having won the title with Lauren Kozakowski in 2015. And those are her fun sports. Well, now it's Grace Sumwinkle circling in that left side. Cuts to the oh. middle, fires and scores! It's on the hockey rink where the Mustang senior forward really excels. Sumwinkle leads the state in goal scoring, averaging nearly a hat trick per game for the second ranked team in Class A. Obviously, I don't like try to look at the points. I mean, they have been coming lately, but like I don't try to focus on them because it's. I just try to play my game and 
points will come here and there depending on the game. This year she's taken a step up and, and she's becoming a, a dominant player in high school hockey. Um, she's fast, she's strong, and obviously, it, you know, you watch her shoot. She shoots like no other girl. So um, she's also a great leader. I mean, she leads by example, works hard every day in practice, um, and in the games brings everything she can. She's definitely a clutch player, that's for sure. Um, from the minute I've been here, she's always been like that. She scores goals in big games, and she pretty much just leads our team. Grace is the middle of three Zumwinkle girls. She credits her sister Anna, one year older and now a freshman at Middlebury College in Vermont, as a huge influence. We are best friends still today and like growing up and we did everything together and she motivated me every single day to push harder and be better each and every day. Grace's hockey talent landed her a place on the U.S. National Under-18 team that she's played for the last two summers. It's awesome and it's like everyone's bought into the team philosophies and programs, which is awesome and it's it's a great level of hockey. Like Minnesota obviously has a great representation, but it's great hockey. Everyone knows like the plays and it's fun. Next year she moves to college hockey and the University of Minnesota, holders of seven national titles, and home to former Breck star Kate Shipper. I visited multiple schools like out east and close to home and I've always like envisioned myself being staying close to home and the minute I walked on the campus I just loved the coaches, loved the players, loved the academic and athletic opportunities that were going to be offered for me there. As she prepares for the world of college hockey, those around her have seen her game improve. She's become more dynamic, um, both now she's a threat in both ends, like she's better defensively, where before I think when she started she was just kind of all offense. Um, and she's now figuring out just how to play with other players and just being able to dominate at this level. I've watched her improve and even though she's older than me, um, it's nice to see that she's gone from being an offensive player to both offense and defense and just a two-way player um, that, like I said, performs in these big games and leads our team to success. While she admits to working on her game hours a day nearly year-round, Grace has carved out time to enjoy both golf and tennis. Grace and Lauren Kozakowski beating her older sisters in the 2015 state doubles final. I didn't think it was going to happen because like I focused the majority of my time on hockey but like as the opportunity arose I, I got intense about it and I obviously wanted to win. My mom played college tennis so she kind of taught me some of her <laughs> skills and so like during the summer I would go hit with her and my sister and so when I wasn't playing hockey I was trying to practice tennis. One thing that's missing from Grace's hockey resume, a state tournament appearance. The Mustangs haven't played in the Class A tourney since 2012, losing some heartbreakers to rival Blake in section play. I mean a lot. We've had the past four years have been like nail biters with Blake each year, and which is awesome hockey to see. But it would be tremendous for our program and as a senior especially. We are through two periods. Maple Grove with two quick goals, 56 seconds apart there late in the second period. Have taken a 2 to 1 lead here on the Breck Mustangs. Led 1 0 after one. Highlights from that second period. And Dan Early, as we uh, mentioned, and Ben Gitzelson mentioned with Coach Engelhardt, it was really Breck that yeah. took the play to Maple Grove. And Maple Grove turned it around late, get those, got those two goals. That was a penalty there on. Uh, Maple Grove and Breck really could have taken advantage, but Coco Francis had some huge saves, kept this a one nothing game. Finally, Maya Martinez able to score at the 13-34 mark, tying it up at one. The assist to Larson and Roll, and then the great pass, McMahon converting on the pass from Wente. Martinez also got an assist on that goal at 14-30 to make it two to one. As we look at our numbers, shots on goal on the edge. For uh, Maple Grove with the shots on uh, the edge of scoring chances, I should say. Just two penalties in the game, one minor in each period, and no power plays so far. Well, it was just a question. It was a, just a change of a couple defensive mistakes. I think Coach Engelhardt said it very well. They played very solidly through most of the second period, but they made two errors against a couple of the better players on the Maple Grove team, and all of a sudden, bang, two goals went in the net. And that's been Maple Grove's M.O. for the past two years. And, uh, you know, you eliminate that, 
and you keep putting the pressure on that the Mustangs can't, we could, they could tie this game up real quick. I don't think we've seen the last of the goal scoring. No, I don't think so either. We will take a break. 2-1 Maple Grove over Breck, two top 10 teams going at it tonight in girls hockey. We'll take another break, come back. Third period of play coming up on CCX after this. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and. And it paid off. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. They said a bottle was just a bottle. that no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. entertaining couple of periods of hockey tonight at the Maple Grove Community Center. Maple Grove number three in class 2A leading number two in class 1A. Breck two to one. Coco Francis coming up big and in that second period stopping everything that came her way and some really good opportunities especially in the first yeah. five minutes of the period by Breck to when they were trying to make it a two nothing game. Yeah, I think that was key for her too. I, I kind of woke her up. She didn't have too much to do in the first period but they needed her boy and she held tight kept the puck out of the net to allow the Crimson to climb back into this thing and get a lead. Underway here in the third period play back in the Breck zone Oppenheimer puck is stuck right there in the water a lot of water right to the side and then Oppenheimer couldn't clear it out move the puck at all shot away in front comes to the blue line and out to center ice Hanson able to get it off across for Precker back for Hanson and they head to center ice taken by Grace Zumwinkle. Trying to pass it ahead on her right. Too far with the pass. Brecker able to feed it to Martinez. She fanned oh. on her pass. Billing picks it off at center. Now Billing will ski it in on the right side. Gabby Billing lost it to Precker in the corner. Precker putting it up through center ice. Billing going off for a change. Taken back by Mustangs in their own end. McMahon goes down. Murphy trying to clear it for Breck and now taken by Williamson back behind and lost it in that same spot. It seems to be really wet it. to the right yeah. of that net that I'd the really is like getting to, stuck in. I'd, I'd like to see him blow the whistle, stop the period for the time being, let the ice dry. 
Now Maple Grove trying to break out. Pass set center by Denneke. Gets picked off at center ice. Brought in. Shot back ahead into the zone by Beanick. Round of the left boards. It comes to Denneke. A rink wide pass. Too far out in front of Roll. Taken by Oppenheimer. Tie up along the end and played by Williamson up on the right boards. And now it comes to Williamson at center. Williamson into the zone. High slot shot away. Easy glove save for Francis and decides to hang on. Well, uh, trying to be aggressive so far, John, and uh, the puck keeps getting stuck on the ice, but Wendell Williamson with kind of a flutter puck and then Francis here with their first shot on goal. But both teams a little hesitant now, trying to be more puck sure than they are anything else that's going to hold them back on speed wise, like, like what we saw in the second period. How come the Mustang or the uh, Crimson, Peyton Olsen, carried deep, ran into some traffic in front of the net? Play to the corner, Brophy tied up with Olsen, dumping it back behind the net. After it goes, Herdeen. Played back to the right corner. The Mustangs have it. Breakout pass comes to center ice. Down to the stick of McGlynn who shoots it in. Wide of Francis goes to the corner. Cleared up the wing by the Crimson. And out they come to center. Olsen with it at center ice. Poked off her stick by McGlynn. Regroups. Gets it back for Precker. Up ahead. Missed on the pass. Trying to get it to Corbin. That's all the way down to the Mustangs end. Goes to Williamson. Getting the pass for Grace Zumwinkle. Nice little pass rink wide across. McGlynn will shoot it in for Breck. Campa for Maple Grove. Plays it off the end boards. Cleared by Maple Grove to center. Backhanded toward the Maple Grove line. Campa's got it again. Playing it ahead. A little bit too far out. In front of her teammate there, back behind the net, playing it wow. around the boards is Martinez, but Breck intercepts it. Zumwinkle getting it ahead. Drop pass comes to Billing. Shot away. Francis steers that wide. Zumwinkle oh. trying to wrap it around and couldn't, and Francis covers up at the side of the net. Francis with beautiful anticipation. It's almost like she had eyes in the back of her head with Zumwinkle back there. She could see her coming around, just knew she was going to try a wrap around. Boy, she got that pad right there. Watch this play. Now, Zumwinkle comes around here. Look at how strong she is. Comes around, but there's Francis right there. Nope, you ain't going to get the easy one here. Nice play by Coco Francis. Off the faceoff, Precker for Maple Grove. Intercepted by Zumwinkle. Dumps it back to the corner. Precker after it again for the Crimson. Around the boards. Comes to Manic McMahon. McMahon with the second goal. Tonight in this game has it. Pass broken up. Nice defensive play by Emily or by uh, Solo Hub. Played by Breck back into the Maple Grove zone. Martinez with it. Martinez skips it past the Breck player. It alone though in the zone has to stop in the corner. Now the rest of her line can get on the ice. Breck able to take it away from her and play at the center. Campbell plays it off on her right side. Brought back in at the point by Roll. Cleared out of the zone by Solo Hub. Down goes Hansen for it for Maple Grove. We're under 12 and a half minutes to play. A terrific hockey game tonight. Maple Grove's girls leading Breck 2 to 1. Buck kept in the zone by Oppenheimer. Back out right point behind the net. And it'll be taken by Roll. Then intercepted in the corner by Williamson. Off comes Mobley with a drop pass. Shot blocked oh, by nice Denneke. Block. Two on two. He's got a roll on a right. A roll with the puck now. Inside the blue line. Shot blocked by Oppenheimer. Cleared, but not out. Comes right out in front. Peyton Olsen. Oh, and a terrific save. It's kicking out her leg. It was Francis to make the stop. Oh, my heavens. Where did that leg come from? What a great save by Francis. Oh, my gosh. 
Now after it goes Corbin. Ellie Corbin skating into the slot. Lost the puck. Taken and cleared down the length of the ice. Icing here on Brecht. They just needed to get a line change there. Dead legs. You betcha. Wow. What a tremendous play by the Crimson. What a great save by Francis. My gosh. Watch this. Watch that puck. And all of a sudden that leg just kind of pops out real quick. She makes it look so easy, John. Effortless. Like, oh, there it is. Okay. No problem. Oh, my gosh. Seeing two of the better goalies in the area, I'd say, without oh. doubt, Dan, here tonight. We're going to get a chance to watch Francis for the next two years. I'm liking that right now. The only goalie dressed tonight for Brad. Yes. I don't know what they do if she gets hurt. <laughs> oh. And Francis got to stuff that one away on the wraparound try. Here's Campa shot. Low tie to the corner on the deflection. Comes to the left point. Emma Larson keeping it in. Larson turning. Dumps it to the empty corner. Maple Grove will try to reset. Corbin after it. Has the puck. Nice little dump off pass to Campa. Campa centering attempt. Nobody home in the middle. And cleared by Breck to the blue line, but not out. Now, Breck able to get it. They clear it out. But they misfire at a pass and another icing on the Mustangs. Uh, you know, looking at these rosters right now, third period, one goal game. I'm seeing 13 seniors on Maple Grove, John. And some really strong goaltending. And I think right now that size and strength are starting to show themselves against this young Breck team. This Breck team is going to be exciting, but they're very young. There's a lot of 10th and 8th and 9th graders playing right now. They're all good. But I think right now the senior leadership right now for Maple Grove might be starting to assert itself. Here comes Maple Grove. McMahon came all the way back to her blue line. Turned it back at center ice, but her pass picked off there. Riskovich for Breck. Drop pass for Grace Zumwinkle. And she lost it to Wente. At center, Billing getting it back. Drops it back into her zone. Played ahead at two center by Brophy. Breck will reset again. Oppenheimer ahead. Zumwinkle. Down deep, Grace Zemwinkle puts it out in front from a tough angle, and Coco Francis another stop. Well, a counterattack by Breck here, finally pulled it together. They took their time, got their breakout organized, especially going through neutral, and brought it down and got a shot on Coco Francis. Got a good shot at her. Doesn't seem to be phased by too much, does she? No. Uh, no, neither one of them. Got that good like, game face on. Yep. Oh, well, just another save. Right. What can I say? Maple Grove unable to clear the zone, but they do control the puck again. Precker. And roll, nice little pass, comes out to center. Danicky turns, comes into the zone, and offside on the right was well, one, Pius. One slight hesitation here at the blue line, throws a winger offside, he's going hard for it. Take it across the line first, and then make your move. Face-off win for Breck. But slides back toward the Maple Girl blue line. Centering pass Ooh. by Breck right out in front. Cleared away by the Crimson. Roll. Can't quite clear. Now it comes out. But pass Denneke down into the Breck zone deep. And getting there first. Emily Zumwinkle for Breck. Billing with it for the Mustangs. Pius. Runs into her. Pushed up the left wing. Out comes Breck. Phoenix carries it deep. Lost it as she came to the side of the Crimson net. Back comes Denneke for Maple Grove. Missed on the pass to Roll. Taken back by Breck Solo Hub. Ahead into the zone. Deep comes Mobley. Still with the puck. Now we'll dump it to the corner. Intercepted there by Campa of Maple Grove. Campa playing oh. it up to the blue line. Kept in by Breck. Cleared and out of the zone it comes. Turning as Williamson shoots it back into the Maple Grove zone. Comes up through center ice. Corbin will dump it back deep. Oppenheimer has a stick on it for Breck. Pass on the right wing and it comes up to the blue line to center. Tie up right in front of the 
penalty box area and shot into the zone by Breck. Under eight minutes to go here in the third period, still two to one, Maple Grove. Martinez has oh. it deep. Martinez, nice little move, stays with control of the puck. Moves to the corner. Chased down there by Qualley. Sidney Hansen with a shot. That hit the side of the Breck net. Centering pass out in front. And Breck able to clear it out to center. Trying to squeeze through there is McGlynn between two defenders and Kent. McMahon has it for Maple Grove. McMahon Oof. with a head of steam up the left wing. Man and McMahon a shot away and shot it wide of the net. Wente gets a stick on it for the Crimson. Drops it back for Hansen. Into the circle and taken there by Emily Zumwinkle of Breck. McGlynn can't clear. Kept in by Precker. Martinez. Pass off into the corner. Shot out in front to flex wide. Boy, this number one line for the Crimson is fun to watch, aren't they? Yep. They're just really asserting themselves, moving the puck. They rotate very well. Boy, nice, nice shift by the Wente Martinez and McMahon line. Here comes Precker for Maple Grove. Skates out toward her blue line. Billing got a stick on it. Comes out to center. Here's Denicky. It's a two on two with McMahon. Denicky now. Zumwinkle comes back into the play. Grace Zumwinkle. And she's got a head of steam back the other way. Zumwinkle, two on two for Breck. Centering pass in front and broken up nicely. Wenty got a stick on it. No, take that. Pius was the one that broke that pass up in front. Zumwinkle again, shot away. That's a flex wider than that. Comes to the near boards to roll. Kept in by Grace Zumwinkle. Puck goes to the corner. Campa back behind the net for Maple Grove. Up the left wing to Katie Denneke. Who clears it in. We get her first whistle in several minutes. We'll bring it back down. That's Rondo Engelhart's team trying to get the tying goal here. They trail it. Two to one with five minutes and 42 seconds to play here in the third. I like that, you know, <clears throat> the way Coach Engelhardt just grabbed one of her players and just kind of talked to her and tight game here against a really good team, settled him down, and Breck is starting to, starting to assert themselves a little bit here, John. <clears throat> Mustangs keep the puck in the zone. Precker for Maple Grove. Back behind the net. It's McMahon with it for the Crimson. McMahon passing it ahead to Wente. Centering attempt, broke it up. At the right blue line, the right point rather, kept in briefly by Maple Grove and then brought by Breck deep into the zone. Williamson not taken down by Wente. High around to the left boards. Martinez waiting for the puck to get to her for clearing it up and out of the zone. Solo hub for Breck. Trying to get the pass off now. Coming back into the play is Mobley. Olivia Mobley will skate up hard on the right side. Ran into a player there. Campa able to clear the pass up to McMahon. Knocked down by Billing at center ice. She and McMahon oh. run into each other. And slow to get up is Gabby Billing. Play continues down into the Mustang zone. Big shot from inside the blue line by Roll. And that caught Billing again, who already oh. had gotten shaken up and caught the brunt of that shot on toward the net by Roll. Now Roll gets it again. Slides the pass off. Campo with a shot. And Francis gets a stick uh, on that one. Denicky with it now for the Crimson. Drops it back behind the net. Puck comes free to the circle, backhanded to the blue line, kept in. Denicky a shot. That came up high on Francis, but able to make it on the stop. Billing for Maple for Brack tied up in the corner. Now Pius trying to clear it up and get it ahead to roll. Mustangs clear, but not out. Campa kept it in a shot. And another save by Francis. And finally, Breck Ooh. ices the puck. A lot of pressure on their end. And now just 345 to go in the third period. Now this this is a situation where I thought that could have been a penalty very easily. Uh, back check a little bit on Kenna Williams to take the better. And this one right here, I absolutely think was a had should have been a penalty. 
Um, that wasn't one of those, oh, I turned around and there she was. It was an intentional hit. Billing, that was a rough shift for her, my was. gosh. <laughs> Abel Grove controls off the faceoff. Neither team is, each team's had the little stretches where they've yep. dominated play, but, but certainly not for more than a couple of shifts at a time. That's how good these teams are and how pretty evenly matched they are. Well, it might have been motivation on the refs, too. It's a one-goal game. They don't want to decide it with a penalty. They want to let the kids play it out, and I do get that. And both teams capable, either one of them. Here comes Mobley for Breck, and blocked by Campa. On a skate on that one, or a stick. Precker trying to turn it up and out of the zone. Pius trying to get after it, but it's Maple Grove giving it up. It's dropped by... Beanick back behind the Crimson net. Williamson playing it up the boards and taken by Martinez. Has roll on her right, but oh. runs into Ella Brophy, who played it well defensively. Brophy for Breck. To her blue line, missed on the pass at center to Billing. No icing, it's back behind the Crimson net. We're down to two and a half minutes to play in the third period. 2-1, Maple Grove turnover by the Crimson. Billing a shot, hit a skate out in front. We get a whistle. If we had a hand pass or played with a high stick, it's going to come out of the zone on fraction on Breck. Hand pass, and we will face it off outside the Maple Grove line. What a comeback by Gabby Billing, huh? What a great shift she just came back on and made herself effective. Watch the play coming up here. She gets a turn around. She brings it back into the guts and takes a shot. Wouldn't that have been something if she would have scored on that? Ah, there's number four. I wonder when she was going to come out here with about two minutes left in the game here. Yeah, probably won't see Grace Sumwick on the bench again. She gets it into the crimson zone. We wind down toward two minutes to play in the hockey game. From the blue line, Shadowaye goes wide off the stick of Solo Hub. Grace Sumway goal. Hanson right with her, gets the pass, tried to get it for Billing, cleared up out of the zone. Here's a chance for Wente of Maple Grove. Wente coming in deep, and nice poke check by Solo Hub to knock it off her stick. Solo Hub goes down hard back behind the net. McMahon centering oh. pass. Oh, and what a terrific save. Frantic oh, robbing Wente in front. Literally should have had the kerchief on her mouth across her mask. Case of Robbie Wente all by herself in front of the net. Gets a perfect pass to her, and she just can't bury it. That was a pretty good hit. Maybe that might have been a little payback, but watch this. Wente right in front. Man, did that slip up and hit the post, I John? think it did. I think it yeah. did. Yes. Okay, big time out here now for, for Breck. I would expect we're going to see number four, and yes, we're going to see number eight, Kendall Williamson, their second leading scorer on the ice now, playing out this last minute and 32 seconds, looking now to pull a goalie and put an extra skater on the ice. Now I'm wondering how long it's going to be before Wente's line comes back out. They're going to come out with the second line of Denneke, PS and Roll, I think. Look at that play. Front. Oh my gosh, it did go off the post. Oh, uh, that might have been the nail in the coffin. So we're going to look at that second line, probably at Maple Grove. Good checking line. They've done a good job tonight. Uh, it's him coming out, but I would probably expect the Wente line coming out as soon as. As soon as they can get them, they need a little rest there after just a nice, nice shift. But Breck will be pushing, so we'll see when they pull the uh, pull the goalie to get that extra attacker out there. Kind of expected it was going to be a good game. Yeah. I kind of thought yeah. a few more goals would get scored. Right. There's only been three, but both goalies have really put a show on tonight. And you really, you really can't be a rated team in this state if you don't have quality goaltending. And uh, both teams certainly have that in spades. One thirty-two to play here. Breck after tonight was just two games left in the regular season. St. Paul United on Thursday, and then not till Saturday, February fourth, when well, they'll play St. Paul United. United again. Maple Grove still 
with games coming up against Dodge County, North Metro, Irondale, Blaine, and then they'll finish at Wyzetta in the game you'll see here on CCX on February 7th. Breck, so they carry deep. Goalie not out yet. Now Francic is going to come to the bench. They'll get that six skater on the ice. Zumwinkle back behind the net for Breck. Six skaters aboard for the Mustangs. Minute 10 to play. Zumwinkle still with it, holding. Missed on the pass, but able to catch up with it is Beanick back behind the net for Williamson getting tied up by Hansen. Beanick trying to get it again, comes back out. Oppenheimer, a big shot, gets blocked, gets a stick back on it. Breck desperately trying to keep it in the zone. McMahon firing it toward the empty net, but missed. It's icing on the Crimson with 47 seconds to go in the third. Oh boy, nice. Set up for a shot, but what you got to do there is as a Breck D, get it down deep. Don't worry about getting the shot in the net. Get it down deep. If it hits the shim pad of the Maple Grove player, all of a sudden they're out of the zone looking at an empty net. Make sure it gets deep. Here's Billing with it. Gets blocked. Good play by Denicky who blocked it and then cleared it out of the zone. McMahon gets after it deep for Maple Grove. McMahon with the puck, lost it then. Taken by Mobley of Breck as the Mustangs look for another rush. Down to 20 seconds to play in the third period. In they come to the Crimson Zone. Mobley still with it, a shot away. Francis the save. The rebound and it's covered up by Francis. Gets a glove on it. Oh, what a rush with the puck by Olivia Mobley and really tests Coco Francis. Just a nice move there. We had. Zumwinkle trailing on the play, and I think a few people were drawn to her, thought, thinking that she was going to give up the puck, but she didn't. Made a nice aggressive move, and then rebound opportunity there. That was... Uh, I think it was Beanick. It was Beanick that got it, yeah. And she, she didn't know Zumwinkle was right there, but you get it there, you take the shot. Absolutely. 14 seconds to go, Brick. Gets the face-off win. Zumwinkle putting it out oh. in front, and Williamson with a shot and the save made. Back behind the net it comes. Down to three seconds to go, and that will do it. And the Maple Grove hangs on to Ooh. win it by a final score of two to one. Well, your first two stars of the game are goaltenders yeah, today so far. I, I think no doubt. Nicole oh, Francis, <laughs> terrific game. There's a smile on her face. She finally cracked some emotion. She should be. What a tremendous game she played. Really did a nice job. Especially once she got scored on that first time. She decided that was the end of it and then put a goose egg up for the rest of the game. Uh, tremendous up and down game though, John. Both teams using three lines solidly, getting offensive output. Not as much as they thought they would, but boy, the opportunities were definitely there. But both teams showing why they're rated in the state. And uh, what an enjoyable game to watch. Maple Grove 2, Breck 1. We'll take time out. We'll hear from a couple of the winning Crimson players in a moment. Here watching coverage of high school girls hockey on CCX Sports. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast does whatever she wants, obviously. She's sleeping right now. She's an epic snuggler. She's so comforting. She's so loving. Toast makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew right then that she was special. Maple Grove wins over Breck. 2-1 on our final. Let's go back ringside one final time to Ben Gisselson. John, I'm here with two of the standouts for the Maple Grove Crimson tonight. We've got to my right, we've got Coco Francis. To my left, we've got Maya Martinez. We'll start with you, Maya. First goal of the game was a major turning point for your team in the Crimson. Take us back to that goal, what you did and what your line mates did to make it happen. Um, well, we kind of got it back to our D and regrouped and um, our defense, Emma Larson, passed it up to Aaron Roll, and Aaron gave it to me, and just 
it was all of them, so I give credits to all of them. Now, your line with Wenty and Manning have been so good all season long, so many points. What about you three makes for such a prolific scoring? What about you three really adds to this offense for the Crimson? Um, I think we move the puck well and really try to create good opportunities and just get it done. <laughs> Thank you, Maya, for your time. Great work tonight. I'll have you hang on for a sec. I'll talk to Coco now. Well done. Thank you. Coco Francis, the backstop, you had 17 saves tonight. A Breck team with some high-scoring, potent players. There was a lot of fracas that happened in front of the net. Breck created a lot of loose puck opportunities. You managed to keep things calm. What's going through your head when Breck has so many back-to-back -back chances, rebound after rebound? What's going through your head to try to keep things calm? Um, well, I just look to my teammates, and they're always playing calm, and they clear the puck outs if it's, like, in tight too much, so then they help me out a bunch. A team in your team that has been to the state tournament last season, the experience of that has to be huge. What are you trying to focus on as section play is approaching five games left in the regular season that of course you have to take care of, but with sections looming, what are the things that your coaches and your team is trying to shore up that you need to get better come section five double A time? Um, right now we're just trying to hone in on our skills and like play our game. We're focusing a lot on our defensive zone now so then we can build from there and move out towards the offense zone. Well done tonight, Coco. A great win and great goaltending. Thank you. Coco Francis and Maya Martinez. My name is Ben Gislason. Wonderful, wonderful game. And thanks a lot for having me tonight, gentlemen. We'll kick it back up to you guys. All right. Thanks very much, Ben. And again, a happy birthday to Coco Francis. And she did celebrate with the win, Dan. She sure did. She got herself her own birthday present. And tremendous game, tremendous athlete. And boy, I tell you what, she's going to be fun to watch here as we move on in the season. And uh, and the sections and stuff, but uh, Maple Grove showed me something tonight. They got down and, and they lost that last game, and it had to be eaten at them a little bit. Really picked it up. I thought their pace picked up, their puck movement, and it really made the difference tonight against a very good Breck team. Just two penalties in the game. They let some things go, which was yep. well, okay, but and it was a fun game to watch. Great skill on hand. Great skating. That's what happens. You let the flow go. You said a couple of times how many boys. It's been a long time since the whistle. Right. You know, that's a sign there's a good hockey game going on. Let it go. And and unless it's really blatant. And, and they really did. And the skill really came out tonight. We saw some fantastic moves by fantastic players. And surprising enough, we're thinking offense. And, boy, we got two stellar outstanding performances by goalies tonight. With the win, Maple Grove improves to 16-4 and four in the season. Breck drops to 16-5 and 2. Well, that'll do it for our telecast tonight here from the Maple Grove Community Center. For Dan Ficken, Ben Gislison, and all of our crew, I'm John Jacobson. Our final score once again from the Community Center, Maple Grove 2, Breck 1.